I think today we have a really interesting question, one that I kind of want to riff on for a little while, if that's okay. And it has to do with anechoic chambers uh, and anechoic response in, in loudspeakers. And our question comes from Michael in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If the goal of high-end audio is to faithfully reproduce the source material, which of course it is, wouldn't an anechoic room be an ideal listening space? I understand that a live room seems like a more natural environment, but the reflections added by the room itself are not inherently present in the recording, which is true. When I listen to headphones or near field speakers, the reflections from the room are minimized and the details of the recording increase dramatically. Wouldn't this make anechoic chambers the pinnacle of hi-fi listening? What a great question. What he's asking basically is, why do we enjoy speakers oftentimes more than headphones when the room interacts so hugely with the loudspeakers and our listening experience? I mean, in any room that, that you're in, sound is bouncing off the walls and the ceilings and the floors and all of that, and you're going to wind up having reflections, and those reflections were never in the recording itself. So when we make a recording, we are capturing everything in the room. So what does he mean by an anechoic response? Well, there are, anechoic means no echo. Um, an echoic chamber is one that is the opposite. It's, you know, it, uh, if you want to test a rocket motor out to see if it's going to hold together, you put it into an echoic chamber and put some loud noise in there and that just, it'd kill you. I mean, it, it, there's, you know, 140, 150 decibels of sound in there trying to shake this rocket apart because it's, it's completely echoey, if you will. No, no sound is lost where an anechoic chamber is kind of a frightening thing. We, I'll tell you a brief little story. We are hopefully, knock on wood, going to be able to purchase the building across the street because we are running out of room. And uh, this, this wonderful building owned by First RF across the street, it's, it's nearly twice the size of this, came on the market. And, oh, I, I won't go into it. We, we've been, you know, put a bid in, they rejected it, somebody else grabbed it, and then fell out of escrow, and then, you know, back and forth, back and forth. We might be able to, we might now be in a position to actually get it, which ah, I hope. But the reason I bring it up, they had the coolest anechoic chamber ever. And this thing was, they spent a million dollars building this anechoic chamber. It's huge, giant. 30 foot tall ceiling anechoic chamber. And if you've ever seen one, anechoic chambers have these giant cones, these uh, uh, of, of foam rubber. This one was uh, anechoic in terms of sound waves and RF, which we didn't really need the RF, but hey, it was cool. It, and you walk into this room, you're on a mesh floor, so you don't touch. And everywhere around you are these sound deadening cones. And the first thing you notice when somebody locks the door on an anechoic chamber is the oddest sound. You hear this You know what it is? It's the blood in your ears passing through close to your eardrum and you're actually hearing it. What's fascinating to me is that as I'm sitting here yapping at you, I hear the sound of the oscilloscopes and I hear, you know, all this back. There's a certain level of background noise. And I know from being in anechoic chambers that there's also the sound of the blood running through my veins that my ears are actually picking up. But there's so much other noise here, you can't hear it. Get into an anechoic chamber and it's a little spooky. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. They're, they are so quiet. There are no reflections whatsoever. And... Uh, anyway, um, they, we begged them when we first put an offer in, keep the anechoic chamber. Do not take it out. And when we lost our first bid on the building, they wanted to sell because we didn't offer them enough money. They wanted more. They spent $100,000 
dismantling the anechoic chamber. I would, oh, it sat outside here for the longest time and I, I wept. I mean, I was, oh crap. Bob Stadther and I, our chief engineer, we just looked at this, these piles of, of the chamber sitting out in the parking lot and it just, I went home just depressed. So it's gone, but anyway, that's what an anechoic chamber is. And no, we don't get one. There are electronic ways to grab hold of signals that you don't really need one. But talk about cool. This was cool. So if we were to play music in that anechoic chamber, there would have been no reflections whatsoever, which is what Michael is, is bringing up. And I have been in dead rooms. There used to be a thing that uh, everybody wanted dead rooms. And they sound awful. Headphones sound great. These sound awful. So wouldn't it behoove designers to design not for rooms, but for anechoic chambers? Well, I think this is a philosophical question because Michael understands that we live in a practical world and no one's going to just, you know, deaden their room, right? Now, maybe a man cave or something, you might have it. But still, you wouldn't want to do that. And that's because the reflections of our room help the speaker sound like it's actually reproducing or re-reproducing what the original recording had. And it does that by the, the reflections off the wall if they're diffuse. So here's the thing. Our ears can tell if we are in the Grand Canyon or, or uh, somewhere where there is no walls, okay? We can sense the fact that we are in a dead room. And when something plays, our ear focuses on that and it doesn't sound like there were really musicians in a room because we know that any room musicians were in have reflections. And despite the fact that the recording was made in such a way that those reflections aren't there, um, as best they can by close miking and they try not to pick up the room. Uh, when you play it back, you want to play it back in a fairly live room that is diffuse as opposed to absorbed so that the reflections tell our ears we are in a real room, there is a real source of music playing, and our perceptive hearing mechanism relaxes and it sounds normal. When you put headphones on, it's a very different experience, and our brains interpret it very differently. That's a, about as close as I can get to an answer for you. It's a great question, and one kind of, you know, the forest and the, you know, do you hear a, a tree falling if there's no one there to hear? But um, I, I like questions like that, and it's, it's uh, the best answer I got. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you.